Morgan, thank you so much for joining us on Social Impact Power Chats. We're so happy to have you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. All right. In true Power Chat form, we're going to jump right in um, with the first question being, how did you come into this beautiful landscape that we call Social Impact? <laughs> How'd you get here? Oh, my gosh. I have always been in this beautiful landscape. I've been in Social Impact my entire career. I think, you know, I think back even by the time I was like 12 or 13, that was what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be. I had this very strong feeling like I wanted to leave the world better. I wanted to do something in social change. And I think I think back to, you know, my grandmother always told me, leave the world a better place. And then she always also told me, you have a good head on your shoulders, so use it. Um, so I think that those two things together have really just always been with me. They've been why I'm here. And the journey I've taken has been more how, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make a difference? Where am I going to do that work? And so that has taken me on a fun journey and evolution. My first job was as a therapist, a clinician, mental health counselor, and that moved me into you know, measurement and evaluation of government programs and into actually creating social impact programs, both nonprofit and in corporate. Um, and you know, under all of this, like a good head on my shoulders. So data and evidence, always using that, we, to, you know, how do we make this world better than we found it? Amazing. Well, you and I first bonded over data. Um, yes. So love to hear that coming through the whole, the whole trajectory. So tell us on that trajectory, where are you now? Like, where are we catching you uh, yes. in this moment? Yes. You are catching me in this really exciting moment. Um, today, I run Raya Cooper Impact Consulting, which, you know, its name is a nod to my grandmother and grandmothers. And we're doing work at this intersection between social impact and business. So our tagline is change the world, measure it, tell your story and repeat. And that's really the kind of work that we're doing with clients. So helping clients create strong social impact strategies that are based in evidence and data evaluate them and measure them, kind of really bring this lens of, we want to do this good work and we want to do it well, we want to do it right. And then tell that story. You know, there's so many celebrations to be had, um, both internally and externally. So equipping companies to be able to do that. But that's also like not where the story ends. Social impact work doesn't ever end. It is kind of this continuous loop. We are always iterating. We're always learning. We're always coming back and doing it again. So how do we do that? You know, how do we build this infrastructure within an organization to make that kind of continuous change, that continuous social impact? Um, so doing that, you know, I love working with both my nonprofit clients and my corporate clients um, in kind of traditional philanthropy and then non-traditional contexts. But in all of these places, I'm really bringing this data-driven lens, you know, how do we look at evidence and research? How do we think about what's really happening? Um, and how do we create strategies that, you know, serve the mission and the social change that we want to see, but then also just, you know, the business practicalities of life. There's certain things we got to be able to do to keep the lights on and the doors open. I love it. And I, I love what you're building. Um, you know, as a fellow practitioner, one of the things that we always talk about is just finding smart people who are doing really good, like the work of the work. Um, and I know, I know that you, you love that fabric and sort of getting, yes. getting in it. So yes. celebrate the launch and all that you're doing. And um, you. it's all awesome. Thank so you. knowing that it is broadly awesome, if you could share, <laughs> now let's go like micro, like into it. Yeah. Um, would love for you to share, you know, it could be an old story, a new story, but a, a pearl of wisdom that you have from something that you created that you helped to bring into this you know, social impact ecosystem um, and a bit about like the who, what, where, when, why, just so if somebody was listening and they were inspired, they would know how to get started. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. Cause like, I love operating at this like high level and our vision and then like, let's get down into the weeds. So I really appreciate that chance to be able to get in there a little bit and get my hands dirty. Um, so before before Raya Cooper, I was at Salesforce, and one of the projects that I particularly loved, it was a really long-term project, was creating 
the paradigm and the infrastructure for Salesforce to be able to tell its social impact story, to be able to do its social impact measurement. So I was sitting really closely with the product org, but then I was also thinking about how all the different pieces across the company of social impact are fitting together. So the employee engagement and the volunteerism and the grants and the product, and what's the through line that's connecting all these pieces and how do we measure it? How do we know what's working? How do we know what we need to iterate? And how do we do that in this like realistic way, the sustainable way, meaning we can do it again and again and again? Um, and how does it show up then in your impact reporting and in the storytelling? And so, you know, that was over the course of many years. But getting into the weeds, kind of where it all started was with defining social impact, like, you know, defining the why. Um, what is ours? What was ours to hold? Um, and so many, many conversations with stakeholders, with business partners, with allies, with so many teams about, you know, what is it that we're trying to do? And then how do we measure it and define it and create those KPIs that are then going to kind of become the lifeblood of the project? Um, and then, of course, too, I think really important to note is that bringing in the perspective of the customer. I think one of the things that I really is important and I value a lot is ensuring that we're assumption testing and pressure testing our own assumptions about the impact that we're having. So not only was it, you know, the impact that Salesforce wanted to have, but also where do we see customers and what do the customers want and how is their voice reflected? Um, so what is, you know, what is the companies to hold? And then, you know, moving through that phase into the next phase, which is like, all right, we got to get this information. Um, and so running interviews, running surveys, and I think at the very beginning, I recognized that I did not want this process to be a one and done. In order to build an impact measurement, it needed to be scalable. It needs to be built into the infrastructure of the social impact org. And so I really thought about, all right, how are we going to make this automated? How are we going to build this into our tech stack? You know, I want this information to be easy to access and reach the people it needs to be. So it wasn't you know, that's difficult to do with interviews. Obviously, having conversations is one thing, but surveys is a great opportunity. And so they became automated um, at a regular cadence that we could look at on a quarterly basis. It was automated through, you know, all the all the automagic tech that's out there and then went straight into our dashboards with very little manual zhuzhing. It just went straight into the dashboard so it could get automatically delivered to those teams. Um, and on a quarterly basis, really, really regular and really scalable for, you know, the whole company. And so that was sort of like my step two. And then it was like, all right, we got to start building the organizational learning muscle around this. And so bringing it into teams, helping them understand what it is they're looking at, what are the levers they need to change? You know, what are the things that they can improve? Where is it working? Where is it not? You know, what needs to be moved? And doing this with kind of the traditional CSR teams who are really comfortable and familiar with looking at this information, but then also with like sales teams and product teams. Um, and, you know, also how do we connect all of this back to what are the things that are really important to both Salesforce from a business perspective and then also in terms of a social impact perspective. So this was, I think, a really awesome project. Many years of work we're talking um, and just a huge wide base of business partners and allies and tech and, you know, the whole thing really, really robust. Yeah. And I think, you know, Salesforce obviously created a really amazing, you know, set of resources for you to do that. But to tack on just like a very quick follow-up question. Yes. Um, do you feel like this could be scaled down softball? Like what, how do you create stickiness without that kind of infrastructure? Do you feel like there's any lessons that you could take away if somebody had a different level of, you know, resources at their disposal, same buy-in leader says, go, go, but just, you know, less stuff. Totally. Yes. Because I think that <laughs> social impact teams are never big teams. I mean, we're still, you know, this, this project sounds really robust, but it was still a team of two yeah, <laughs> making it happen. Um, and so, and, and often social impact teams are teams of one and the impact measurement may be a team of a quarter of a, of a FT. They're not, um, necessarily an entire staff. So absolutely. And I think because I come, I have so much experience in the nonprofit, I kind of operate with the assumption of we got to just, you know, what do we got to work with and let's make 
just the most of all of our resources. And yes, absolutely. I think the things that became really clear to me um, is that one, you can't, none of this work can be done alone. And so the allies are really, really important. And that was where we started, you know, first is like, who are the allies? Who are the natural allies? And then who are some of the folks that need to be brought along? Um, and then I'm, I'm seeing actually just in the last like week or so, I've had a lot of conversations with folks about like internal collaboratives, hmm. internal coalitions around social impact. And I myself built quite a few of those to push this project along many working groups, advisory groups. Um, power hours, you know, all the things that you need to do to kind of build the internal momentum. And then, you know, you're also bringing in resources from other teams. So you need that buy-in. I think that's a huge strategic way to do that um, is to bring those, those allies around. And then also, like I said, this is, you know, this didn't happen overnight. This happened over the course of many, many years. And so, having these bite-sized pieces of being, you know, this is the piece I can do today, this piece I can do tomorrow, but knowing where I'm going, I think that's one of the pieces that I had. I always knew where the, what the roadmap was for the impact measurement function and for what that wanted to look like. And so even though it didn't happen in one day, I always knew where I was tracking towards. And I had some really just like easy wins over the course of it that built momentum internally, got people excited um, and really helped, really helped get us there. Amazing. And yeah. for anyone listening who's like, I don't know where to get started, you now have Raya Cooper Consulting that you can call. And yes. <laughs> Morgan um, is, you know, it has hung a shingle so that she can be there to answer questions and, and partner on things like this, which is amazing. So thank you. Because we're a power chat and it's already time for our last question, um, which I can't believe. <laughs> I go. Talk, I'm like talking to you is like talking to myself. I'm like, this is all so amazing. I know. I love everything that you do. Um, Thank you. But our last question is one about, you know, crystal balls. We yeah, we know the future is coming. It is the only thing that is certain. Um, where, <laughs> where are we headed as it relates to social impact in that future state, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, like, I love this question. Um, I think one of the things I'm seeing is that there is this increasing need, increasing call, whether it's a nonprofit or a CSR or foundation, what have you, to demonstrate impact. Of social impact programs. Um, and we are seeing that with the escalation of environmental sustainability governance reporting for the corporate level, the ESG reporting, um, but just overall, like folks need to see the concrete, you know, what is happening, the demonstration of value. So I think that's one piece that I'm seeing. And then the other pieces that I'm seeing, especially in social impact, is there this need to connect the impact need and the business need. And I think that's, you know, my piece of advice, even when thinking about impact measurement, which can feel so like pure of heart. Often we come from very philosophical background. We have, you know, lots of good um, kind of good orientations there is we need to be thinking about the business practicalities too, and make sure that we're delivering, you know, both on the social impact and then on the, the business as well. So that our businesses or our nonprofits or our foundations, what have you can demonstrate in what the good that they're doing and also be able to use that information in just really practical ways to get their needs met. I co-sign on that. <laughs> Couldn't agree more, <laughs> shockingly. Um, yeah. Well, and I uh, really appreciate you coming on um, and all that you do and all that you are supporting well-intentioned you. companies and organizations to do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this time.